Are you studying for a certification and feeling overwhelmed by the amount of material out there? It can be challenging to prepare for a certification effectively. But did you know ChatGPT can help you with your study sessions? It's been almost two years since ChatGPT was released and if you are not using it to making your daily life easier, you are missing out. So let's see how you can utilize ChatGPT during your studies, ranging from materials recommendation, explaining complex concepts, generating practice exams and more. We will begin with simple prompts first and move to more complex ones towards the end. Alright, the first prompt that you might find useful after you pick a certification is to ask ChatGPT to explain you the main objectives covered in that certification. So over here I have my prompt prepared. I ask for the topics covered in CompTIA Security Plus but I also added another thing. So here I want recommendation for free resources and I also asked ChatGPT to create me a six week study plan that I can follow and learn everything which is covered by the certification. So let's press enter and the answer you will get will be a little bit longer than you would have expected. That goes for all the prompts that we will mention in here because the structure of the prompt is a little bit more complex and therefore we are getting these complex answers as well. So we have the main topics covered in CompTIA Security Plus. It goes by attacks, threats and vulnerabilities, architecture and design, implementation, operation and incident response and governance, risk and compliance. Here are three resources for each topic. So let's see. I'm a little bit disappointed. Sometimes you can try to run this prompt multiple times because I don't see my favorite resource for CompTIA Security Plus, which is Professor Master, but it's okay, I guess. Uh, if we scroll even further down, here we have the six week study plan. It goes from Monday to Saturday. I explicitly ask ChatGPT to remove Sunday from the study plans. And here is also breakdown by hours. I'm not sure if in such a short period of time you will be able to go through everything. So you might need to pump these um, numbers up. But hey, uh, you can always ask ChatGPT uh, to adjust the answer based on different inputs. So maybe you need to study more than two hours. Maybe you recognize that you are a slow learner and that you need more time to process the information. So in that case, you can create a different study plan. Or so here's a daily recap schedule. Each study day includes a one our time block for reviewing and recalling the day's notes to reinforce the retention. Okay, so it goes, so it's not two hours, but it's uh, more like three hours, I guess, because uh, you are doing the reviews. Okay. And the reviews, it's something I have mentioned in purpose. One of my huge hobbies is neuroscience, and I am a person who tries to optimize every aspect of my life, and learning is one of them. And according to science, active recall is highly effective learning strategy. Honestly, I think it's the best thing you can do to retain information for a long period of time. I can see too frequently people pass the certification and in a month or two, they just forget 80% of it. The goal is not to pass the certification, but to gain the knowledge. That's why I would highly recommend you Anki. It's a brilliant free software where you create your own flashcards. This is how it looks. I have multiple decks for different topics in my Anki. And if I click on any of them, I can click on study now. And you have the question on one side of the flashcard. You get to answer it. And once you do, you will click on show answer. The correct answer will appear. That's the other side of the flashcard and you get to rate the answer. This rating will influence when your card will appear again 
and that way you can take your recall sessions to another level. And before we move to the next prompt, I want to mention that you can adjust this. Alright, let's go back to the ChatGPT prompts. And now that you have comprehensive plan and study resources at your feet, you can start your sessions. And as you study and make notes, you will encounter different concepts and some of them might not make much sense to you at the beginning. And for that, you can take advantage of ChatGPT to help you understand. What could be beneficial to you if you are not a native speaker is to ask ChatGPT to explain this concept in your mother tongue. Here is my new prompt where I explain what I'm studying for and what is my struggle to understand. And you can add the native language in here. So if I press enter and I <laughs> included the English because I want you to understand the answer, but I could add anything. I could add my mother tongue language as the check. But here it will explain the term in simple terms for me. That way you can understand it better. So in here, salting is a method used to protect password from being easily cracked. Here are key points. Salt is a random value added to each password before it's hashed. It makes passwords unique, even if two users have the same one. Prevents rainbow tables attacks. Here are real world examples of salting. And in practical context as well. And I have also included, since it's hard for you to understand, you will mostly struggle to retain this information as well. And therefore I would advise you to generate a practice questions and you can add them to your Anki deck and go through them regularly during your study sessions, right? And similar to this, you can make slight adjustments. So let's say you have two concepts and they are very similar and you need to understand the difference between them. You can take the same prompt, slightly change it. So in this case, I want to explain what's the difference between the honeypot and honey nut. And once you just make slight adjustments, it will provide you with the same structured answer. So it will explain each concept one by one. So it starts with the honeypot, it's a decoy system or server deliberately set up to appear as vulnerable to attackers. It goes into real world examples, which could be beneficial to you if you are studying. And below will be the explanation of HoneyNet. So basically a HoneyNet is a network of multiple honeypots working together. It will again provide you with key features, real world examples, but more importantly, towards the end, it will give you the comparisons between the honeypot versus the honey net. So you can see at first hand, what's the difference between those two concepts. Here are the main differences, which will be highlighted to you. And it will give you also the examples where you would use each of them. This time though, we didn't get any generated questions. So you might need different prompts that will help you to create flashcards. You could pass your notes from the study sessions and ask ChatGPT to generate them. Or you might ask for different flashcards based on topics or based on the certification itself. Let's start with this one where we specify the concept that we are interested in that certification we are studying for. And also, if I scroll a little bit down, I also want to include different topics. And the prompt also tells to create 10 different flashcards and it should be for easy, medium and high difficulty. So that way you don't need to create multiple prompts or ask to generate again, generate again. It will create you 10 flashcards and you can decide which one is the most appropriate for you and for your studies. And also, if nothing works for you, 
you could always ask ChatGPT to generate you more. In this case, it asks for this the injection attack, its buffer overflow, replay attack, and as we go down, it will create more complex and harder questions to answer. So the median one in privilege escalation attack, what is the difference between vertical and horizontal, horizontal privilege escalation? And here is the answer that you can put on the other side of your flashcard. So with this prompt, you can generate as many flashcards as you want. Just once more recommendation, remember to keep the same chat to avoid any duplicate flashcards that might the chat GPT create for you. That way he will remember the history and you can avoid it. And also use them. If you're going to create them and not use them, they are worthless, right? So each of your study session should start with the recall session and that should include the Anki deck and the flashcards at least that's my recommendation if you really want to retain the information and learn efficiently and once you go through everything through all your plan and you studied everything everything is covered now you want to test yourself and for that you might take advantage of the notes that you have created here I'm uploading my notes in structured format and I'm asking ChatGPT for recommendation. I want to analyze my study notes and find any weak section and generate texting questions based on that. So let's press enter. It will analyze the file, read through it. And once it's done, then it will spit it out for you. So in that case, it's reviewing the SC100 certification and it's uh, telling me specifically I want to focus on two areas, incident response and recovery planning and application security. So it recognized that my uh, incident response plan might not be the best and it's also asking you to please answer this question and then it will continue with further analysis. With this prompt, basically you get a study partner who will wait for you to answer and based on that, it will navigate you where you should focus your time next. So let's answer him. I will start with preparation, detection and investigation. Press enter and hopefully he will correct me and tell me that there are more steps. Okay, you are on the right track. The steps mentioned are part of the incident response process. Here is a complete incident response lifecycle. So something you might now add to your Anki deck. And after that, it will create you another question that you can answer on your own. Okay, I want to provide you with one last prompt, which will help you to generate practice exam questions. Again, you need to specify which certification you are studying for. And in this case, I want to create 50 questions. But in this case, again, he will not proceed to the next question until you answer it. This gives you time to think about it and choose the correct answer on your own. So here it wants to describe buffer overflow attack. Okay, so the correct answer is B, but let's for just fun go with the D and it should correct me yes your answer is incorrect the correct answer is B and it gives me the explanation but why is that the case and below is another question question two this way you can practice as long as you need and if you encounter something you lack the knowledge of it's not hard to go back to your notes and study certain topic in more depth just be cautious how much you rely on ChatGPT. It's not correct every time and sometimes it can provide you with incorrect answers. So be sure to verify if you are not completely sure. Otherwise, I think it's a great tool which will help you with your studies. So let me know in the comments if you have used ChatGPT in the past and what are your favorite prompts. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe and like it does help the channel to grow.